Yeah, let's go do that. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to what we like to call and can art friends right now. We have progressed out of the summer art to now because well the seasons have changed and it's no longer summer um but we are super thrilled to continue this program we read every bit of your feedback and we know how much you love it and how important it is to keep it going so we're we're going to keep it going um before i get started real quick i wanted to let you know that uh one of our dear friends of this program did pass away george dugnan and uh, we just wanted to briefly honor him. Um, everything we do at and can, everyone's a peer. I'm a peer. Hannah's a peer. Every single person involved at and can is a peer of some. And we we take um, we take losses like this very seriously, and we hold them deep to our hearts. And we want to let George's family know that we're thinking about them during this time. Um, so, Hannah, is there anything you'd like to touch base on about that, real quick? Yeah, I, well, I just, I didn't know George um, much at all. I knew what, I knew his love for this art class and um, I held that very deeply and he and I chatted, you know, a little bit off and on and he made such a huge impact on, on me in such a short amount of time. And so um, I'm holding him in my heart. Um, he very much, he meant he a lot to me and I hardly knew him. So mm -hmm. um, like what you said, Alexa, um, we're all peers. Yeah, and, uh, and we're we all get holding, to know each other. <laughs> yeah, we're all holding George and his entire family and the Ann Can community in our hearts. So, um, thank you, thanks, Hannah. Um, so pivoting real quick, tonight's class. So two things: leaves and MacGyver. What do they have to do with each other? <laughs> Scribble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I think the thing is like our project tonight is leaves and two, we're MacGyvering yeah. this because you can use anything goes. We were talking about soy sauce, <laughs> coffee grounds, yeah. like Over if my you want to go guys, crazy don't. with this. I was trying to figure out how a stick of gum was going to work into this project. <laughs> you know what? If you can figure it out, yeah. more power to you, seriously. MacGyver always used a stick of gum. <laughs> So Hannah, um, I'm gonna hand this off to you now. Yes, let's do this. Um, welcome everybody. Um, I'm always so, just so thrilled to bring you guys an art an art lesson today. Um, thank you for putting the art cam up. So I would like to just very briefly run through the things that we'll need. Just again, real quick for those who didn't hear it. Um, paper, gonna need some paper today. That's gonna be very important. Um, use what you have though, okay? Like you don't have to get anything fancy. Um, I'm using markers. Um, in fact, I always just use Crayolas just because they're easy to get, Walmart has them, whatever. Um, so I just, I use my Crayolas, uh, but if you have crayons, colored pencils, even just pen and pencil, that would be perfectly fine. Um, and if you ever have any questions about how to use them, if you don't have exactly what I have, um, please come up and ask me, um, raise your hand, or you can even interrupt me. That is absolutely okay too. Um, because sometimes I go kind of fast too. So you're absolutely okay to interrupt me with those questions whenever they pop up as well. Um, Alexa will be monitoring the, monitoring the chat as well. So you can put your questions and comments in there too. Um, but other than that, um, I will be going step-by-step step with how to create this particular painting, but everybody's, um, depth of media is going to be different, okay? So please don't feel like you have to have these colors. Um, we're just looking for fall colors. So yellows, orange, red. I, I love to put surprise colors in there. So purple is kind of my surprise color. If I, that's yeah. what I call it, just surprise color. So yeah, and I have a lavender in there, a little bit of green. Um, but again, you don't have to have all of those colors. Ask me questions when they come up, okay? So I am going to begin and we're going to start off with drawing our tree. So I will go through step by step. We'll draw our tree. Then we will do our um, leaves and then we'll jump down here and then we'll do the sky very, very last. So when we're taking a look at our paper, um, let's look at this. Our leaves, our entire tree takes up about half or more than half, I would say. 
So keep that in mind whenever you're drawing our um, drawing your trunk here. I'm probably going to start my trunk right down here, um, and then we'll just kind of move on up here. So the tree takes up a huge portion. I'm also going to go ahead and take out my colors because I like to have them all in order whenever I actually start. So I've got like, I'm just gonna pull out a bunch of these colors. I have some sort of maroon that I put in there as well. I put in maroon, green. Um, let's see, I put in that magenta, orange, red, yellow. Um, I think I put gray in there, but again, please, um, please don't feel intimidated by the amounts of colors. If you don't have everything, that's okay. I think I got everything. Yeah, let's do this. So I'm going to start off with my brown. And I actually did not use dark brown in this particular tree trunk, but let me show you another version that I did that does use dark brown. It's not finished, but I really wanted to show you this one. So I used dark brown for this one because um, I figured it'd be, it might be kind of nice to see what it looks like if you only have the uh, the regular, just regular markers, like you know, not fancy thing, 12 colors. So literally just the, uh, just one kind of brown. So I just wanted to see I just wanted to show you guys what that would look like with one kind of brown. I used um, brown or light brown and I used gray in this one. So I will start off with the light brown actually. Are you guys ready? I'm excited. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so let me get my brown and my tree trunk. It's a lot easier to start off um, with a more skinny tree trunk, they're usually going to be thicker on, on the bottom. And as we go upward, they get just a little bit thicker. And I wanna show you guys, I'm seeing a lot of Y shapes in here. Here's a Y shape. Here's a Y shape. Here's a Y shape. There's a Y shape. So, or V shapes, I would say. There's a V shape there. Um, keep that in mind as you're trying to figure out how to split your branches, Y shapes. Just keep it in mind. Now I'm going to start off on the bottom here. Nice, simple little tree trunk. I have plenty of space. I'm just going to evaluate it. I have plenty of space down here for all of my foliage, my fallen foliage. I'm gonna keep a little space up here for the wind in the background. Now, see right here, that little double Y shape. I'm gonna continue up over there, continue up over here. I'm going to make a shape there. There's your imaginary V. And I'll just start on this side for now, okay? I'm not gonna worry about this part yet. You can see I can, I can split this up into further V shapes. And now I can split it up into further V shapes than that. I'm just putting those Vs in and we're just building off of that. Perhaps I want this to end because it's kind of close to the top up here. Keep that in mind, it's close to the top, so they get smaller, the closer to the top they get. And I will, just so you know, I will be repeating all of this because I have all this area to do too. If you miss something, that's okay, but I'm starting off with lots of V-shapes. And right here, I, in my head, I intended on uh, closing this gap, but that didn't happen. So let's just make another V-shape and we're just gonna stretch it. I always like to kind of, um, since my hand is, doesn't always want to reach its, its, its target, um, or perhaps it doesn't really work very well, because you know when your brain tries to tell your hand what to do, is isn't always going to work out so well. Um, I like to sort of pivot and figure out something from there. Got another V shape there. Gonna stretch that up. Now, I'm looking here, I accidentally made 
a lot of space right here. So let's just kind of make a really weird check mark shape, I guess. Close that up. And then I'm going to jump over to this side. And I am going to save a little bit of space in here for this middle tree trunk right there. So because I want to save that space, I'm going to jump to this side. Now, it might be nice to have some little um, elbows, if you want to call them that, little elbows in your, uh, in your trees. So I'm going to jump to this side. Since I just happened to end right there, I'm just going to make it stretch up a little bit more. That's an elbow right there. Can you leave what you have showing so I can see it? Because I'm slow. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How about? I know I keep moving up to the sides when you leave that there. So I'm going to jump over here and let's kind of stretch this out. Stretch that up. Make another V shape. Make another elbow. Let's go up. Branches always want to move upward. So we're going to do that in our picture. They always want to move up. There's that V shape there. And then I'm going to have this branch too. I'll kind of pause for a second and let you guys do that. Like I said earlier, I do tend to go fast sometimes. So please tell me if I'm going too fast. remember keep those v-shapes in mind um trees have elbows so you can put those in there anytime you want keep in mind also that you will you will have a lot of different leaves in here so if there's anything that you don't particularly like it's probably mostly going to be blended like you'll still see some of it but it'll probably mostly um be covered so don't worry too too much Okay, so I'm going to stretch this branch up. And again, I have another moment for a V-shape. And yet another V-shape right there. And yet another V-shape right in here. And there we have it. They kind of look like deer antlers to me. I like <laughs> it. Right? I will start on the middle section in a moment. The middle section, um, I just happened in this, in this particular project, in the original one, I happened to not really make it um, as complicated as the outside. Um, I don't know why I did that. It just, just kind of happened that way. I'm just kind of pointing it out. Now I'm taking a look at my, my picture right here. And at least for me, you may be different, but at least for me, this space right here is kind of big. There's a lot of space right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at this big portion here. For me, there's a big spot here and I'm gonna stretch it down just so it, just so it takes up some more of this room here. It takes up more space. Now that's my, that's only my picture. So yours is probably gonna be different, but that's how I'm handling that large space right there. Just kind of stretching the bigger of the tree trunks towards the middle. So I have some space to, to add that other third tree trunk right in here. So I, I really wanna keep these lines. These lines, they sort of indicate that, that these two um, ones off to the side are in the front. So I'm not gonna interfere with those two lines. I'm just gonna make this coming off the middle. Just gonna stretch it up, make another V shape just cause I can. Make another V shape. You can crisscross your, your branches if you want to. Make that V shape right in here. I didn't really, end on doing that, but it just kind of makes sense.
Now I'm taking a look at my uh, at my tree frog. It's always nice to um, sit back a little bit because I know we, we tend to become uh, very hyper focused on our pictures, and so we only see uh, six inches to a foot in front of us. So kind of sit back a little bit and take a look at your tree as a whole. And for me, I'm seeing that I have a pretty big space here. I want to show you guys what to do with big spaces in case you have those huge spaces and you're just like, I don't know if that makes sense so much. I actually did the same thing on this, this other picture right here on the side. I accidentally made this upper area a little too big. So my fix for that was to put in a little owl hole, um, a, little, a little hollow right here. So if you wanted to do that, this, is, this part is optional, but it's there. If and I'd like to, to point out, it doesn't seem to be a coincidence that the last thing we made were owls. So maybe that can be oh. a little home for the owls. We can continue Pure. on the story. <laughs> Pure <laughs> coincidence. We, exactly. We had to make our owls and now we're making our owls home now. That's, that's oh, a great good. point. Uh, Owen I'm, needs a home. I know. <laughs> Owen does need a little, little home. Um, so I'm going to say this spot's a good spot. Honestly, even that one, but I'll focus on this one. All I have to do is make a little circle or an oval. I didn't really, it just kind of happened that it, it was more oval and more slanted. So that's its little, its little oval right there. I've got another elbow here that's a lot of space. I made another one there. Yours may be different, of course. Now we can start to make some bark. Now this is where it, it varies a little bit. Um, again, I used uh, two colors. I used this light brown and I used gray for this particular one. But on the other one, I didn't have another color. All I had was that dark brown. There it is again, so you can take a look at it. So for that, well, honestly, no matter what you do, we're all going to start out the same way. Personally, I'd like to reshape my tree trunk a little bit. This is the time to do it. I feel like it should be thicker on the bottom personally. So I'm just going to pick a side and widen it a bit. That's all. Just because I felt like mine needed to be widened. So this is the time to do it now if you feel like it needs to be wider on the, on the bottom. And then really anywhere, honestly, you can start to build these longer lines, or I'm sorry, these shorter lines, one on top of the other. Start from the bottom. I'm paying attention to the, the side here and the way that it, it curves down. And honestly, some of these lines are going to be a little bit thicker than others simply because you're you're going so fast it's just going to happen that way and that's okay because some pieces of bark are thicker than others so all you're going to do is make your way one tree trunk at a time sometimes patterns will just kind of develop as you're 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 creating this it's natural for your hand and your brain to want to make patterns. So when you notice too much of a pattern, then go in there and maybe try and add a few, a few extra smaller lines or maybe a few extra thicker lines. Now I'm avoiding the, the hollow, the little owl hollow for now. For now, I just wanna kind of make my way up the trunk. And I'm seeing myself making uh, those same patterns. So I'm going back and I'm adding a couple of smaller lines just to break the pattern. Any questions so far? I know that was a lot in like, how many minutes? 10 minutes. But this one is just kind of do at your own pace and fill in those spaces. 
no matter how many types of um, tree trunk colors you have, this is how you're going to start. Just keep going up the tree. Now, I've finished this portion. I just kind of made my way all the way to the top. Now I'm gonna jump down and I have this tree hollow around here. Now I'm gonna do um, smaller, rounder um, dashes. It's going to go around my, my circle or oval. And then we're just gonna kind of meet the, uh, the marks that we need down here. And then continue on our way as usual. Again, I'm falling into that pattern again. So I'm just kind of filling in, in the space as needed. Any questions? Keep on going. Can't wait to see. The I think everyone is just so relaxed because it's a meditative yeah. part. Yeah, you see, I love this kind of stuff because there's really a power in numbers here. Like you just keep on making the same types of strokes. And to that point, actually, that's exactly how we're going to handle all of these leaves. Same types of, of strokes, um, but different colors. Um, same thing with down here. Same types of strokes different color. Same thing with the hair. With hair. I, hopefully you'll see the pattern. It's really just doing a few different types of strokes, but in repetition. So repeat it again and again. Now for me, I'm going to go back to this hollow right here. And again, I'm going to outline it first with my tiny rounded tick marks, just kind of following this. And then eventually I'm going to want it to lead up or down, depending on where you're at. Kind of lead into these other tick marks here. I'll just call it bark mark. How about that? Marks. I like it. Bark mark. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Speaking of bark, uh, my dog Coco. Um, just my mom bought him a pair of uh, pajamas <laughs> for the cold. <laughs> and so, like, for whatever reason, Bark Mark reminded me of my doggy Coco in his new pajamas, his new Halloween pajamas. <laughs> He's so cute. I love him. <laughs> it's, it's, not even, it's not even cold. It's a San Antonio. <laughs> it's not cold. It was, like, high 70s today. And he's got some nice cozy winter pajamas. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I know. My mom's always buying him uh, nice things like that. <laughs> now I just have one more section up here. So I'm going to lead all of my marks into the last bit of uh, tree trunks that I have. More of these little bark marks. Let's keep on going, same kind of patterns. And we don't have to, the, the nice thing about these kinds of repetitive patterns is that um, they don't have to be um, complicated. Like I'm just using smaller and smaller marks as I move up. I'm just following the path that is already there. Jumping down. Now for this one, I will, I will move into uh, color number two, which for me would be gray. But again, if you don't have gray, you can absolutely leave it the way it is. Does anyone need any guidance? Do you want to do anything different to yours? Maybe you need uh, these suggestions. You're more than welcome to ask me. I highly, highly encourage creativity. So um, that can include 
just an idea that pops into your head, you know, uh, maybe you want to put an owl in it later. I don't know. You can think about it. What about a birdhouse? Oh, a birdhouse. Like what? I wonder if we can have it. Maybe one of those standing birdhouses. Oh, that would be fun. Kind of like stands up. We can do that with a darker color. Like I'm thinking it'll be the the very last thing that we do. I think that'll be easiest. Like it'll stand up. Maybe we'll do it in blue or black. Yeah, do that. Right next to the tire swing. Oh, that would be cute too. Yeah, those will be last. Let's do it. Now I will go ahead and add my second color, which is going to be gray. And um, I'm going to go ahead and fill in uh, all these other spaces. See that? Here's my aim. I'm aiming for those in between spots. I couldn't really get before. Now you do see a lot more gray in here compared to in here. Um, I'm remembering now, I'm pretty sure I went back and I added later on, um, not now, but later on, I added more of this color on top, just so you know. But same process though, this is how I started off. I'm not going to worry about the bottom here either. See how it just kind of is cut off like that. I think that's kind of the, the charm of having a lot of leaves layering the ground. You don't see roots. You don't see, you know, there's not much of a, a clear, definite end to the tree trunk. So all I'm doing is following my same pattern right up the tree. Now, if it's easier for you to move your paper around, you can absolutely do that. Like I'm finding it kind of hard to, kind of hard to reach some spots. So it's kind of moving things around. So if that's you, that's absolutely okay. It's always a much better idea to move your picture instead of you know, moving yourself and making yourself uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's not do that. Here we go. You know, sometimes I, sometimes I think of the phrase, there's a phrase in um, construction work, I guess, or anytime you're, you're working with, with tools, work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my philosophy with art too. <laughs> in fact, when I was, um, I don't think I've brought this up before because for whatever reason now I forget about that phrase, but um, like that phrase always used to pop up whenever I would, um, whenever I was first diagnosed with MS and was just sort of starting up art again, um, work smarter, not harder would pop up into my head because I had to work smarter. I have MS, I have to, you know, yeah. accommodate myself accommodate my brain and what it's doing to me. So that absolutely translated into art. I had a neighbor several years ago that was helping me decorate some brownies and uh, she, <laughs> and she was, we, so yeah, it's up on top of the counter and I kept trying to move around and she just looked at me and she's like, Andrea, it might be easier if you just turn the, you know, the, it's not a pot, the thing or you know turn the cake around basically <laughs> oh yeah it's the kind of thing that you don't really <laughs> your brain doesn't really uh catch up to the easy thing <laughs> so you so you were moving yourself literally right, getting around yes the counter, around right? yes she had an island in her kitchen and i kept going around and around the island yes <laughs> oh that's amazing <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, Andrea, that sounds like something I would do too. <laughs> Let's just climb onto the counter. I get it. <laughs> That's hilarious. So next time that happens, try to think, 
work smarter not harder that's right i almost <laughs> stood on my head and even though you keep saying it it seems like i'm practically standing on my head <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i know it's funny the things that elude us and maybe it's not just an ms thing but i don't know it's <laughs> I feel like I always have to think a little extra hard sometimes. I always blame everything on MS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, honestly, I do too. <laughs> I do too. I mean, I got to make that diagnosis work for something. <laughs> I know, like... I'm I'm terrible with uh, remembering names, of course, and I think you know a lot of people are. But yep. it's also like remembering faces too sometimes, and I feel terrible about it. Oh, I'm bad. I, yeah, me too. I'm horrible with it, and I do. Yeah. I have two women that are on my team at work, so let's keep in mind I work from home. I've never. I don't see these people face to face, but I should oh. I know their voices. I know them. I've worked with them for 10 years. It's it's a I, I work with a group of 10 people. I've worked with yeah. these women for 10 years. And I am constantly calling Janice uh Claire and Claire Janice. I cannot get oh. the two. I don't I cannot get the two. I'm just gonna blame it on MS. I'm and don't just, you hate it? Don't you hate it when people say <laughs> it's okay, you're fine? It's like, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm like, no, I'm not fine. No, I'm not. It's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal, guys. So, <laughs> Hannah, I, I have a quick question for you. Um, if you were yes. using one color, um, how? I mean, I know you can make your texture marks, but uh, is there any way you can jazz it up a little bit? Yeah. So, if you're using one color. How can you jazz it up a bit? Let's see. Well, how would I approach this one? Um, perhaps take a look at uh, your picture and decide where's the light coming from. Is it is it like is it on the right hand side or like okay let's let's you guys see my my little lights right behind me. So if we think about where the light is. Where are the shadows going to be? The shadows are always going to be on the literal opposite end. So if you're looking at my screen, my light's right there. So my shadows are going to be right here on the opposite side. So what you can do is take your color, just your one color, and let's thicken one side. So I'm going to, let's see, let's pretend my light is right up here, just like what we saw. So that means my shadows are going to be on the opposite side. I'm going to thicken up this side. I'm using the thick end of my sharp of my my marker. I have a hollow here. It's going to have a bottom portion that has one or two thick lines. Um, let's see. This side is going to be thicker because it's on the opposite end, like that. So that's, that's just how I would do it. That's how I would jazz it up a little bit. Those are great ideas. Um, Thanks. Yeah, that's just kind of how you um, just in general think about weight, line weight, or perhaps, um, uh, pers no, I guess not perspective, just, um, what is it, gradient. I'm forgetting my art terms here, guys. <laughs> um, that's just how you just kind of... Um, figure out how to make things a little bit heavier, a little bit darker. So you can go in through each and every You can branch. emphasize it. Thank you, Alexa. Thank you. You can emphasize um, one side or the other, especially in this middle section right here. Just like one line right there and bam, it looks so much nicer. And you don't even have to completely um, be meticulous about it. Just a few of these lines will be great. I hope that answers your question. Now, jumping back over here, um, we have if well if you have hollows to fill, then go ahead and fill them in now. Um, 
I would say it might be a little difficult to put little owls in there, but you can definitely try to draw some little owls right now. Um, I think mine are a little small to do that, so I'm not going to put any owls in there. But um, because I have two colors here, um, I'm actually going to put both of my colors in there. So, I mean, what about why a not squirrel? Share space? Oh, a little squirrel. I'm wondering how or to just draw some that. eyes. Like, yeah, the, the squirrel might be, maybe that would be a, a silhouette. Oh, yeah. Like an idea for a silhouette, perhaps. I wonder how I can do that. I'll have to think about that. I'll come, I'll come back to it later. <clears throat> now, for me personally, um, I would like to put some more of my brown in there because um, I'm seeing a lot of space in here. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the thick side. And I'm just going to put some more thicker marks in there. Like I'm still seeing some of this, um, uh, some of the white peeking through, but at least I have most of it covered. I really don't want to cover all of the white. At least I don't, but you, you may have a differing opinion. You absolutely can cover it. I want you guys to do whatever um, feels natural to you whenever you're doing this. And I know that's kind of hard to imagine, especially if you don't, um, if you don't always do art, you don't really know what natural feels like, but pay attention to the marks, pay attention to how they feel in your hand. And I, I know that that's difficult, you know, when you're, we have, you know, a lot of people in here who make experiments and I'm going to continue to too. That's something that I'm really proud of. That really struck me hard when I was um, first diagnosed with MS. But uh, I don't know, you just kind of get used to it. You just get used to it and how, how, the, how the tools feel in your hand, even if they don't feel, you know, you just kind of get used to it. And you'll learn to adapt eventually. So Hannah, how did you decide um, for gray? Um, I knew that I wanted it to be a, uh, an autumn color, but I didn't want it to be as, um, I didn't want it to be very dark. I felt like the, the regular brown, this one right here, the chocolatey brown, I mm -hmm. felt like, I just felt like it would be a little too dark and a little bit predictable. Like I wanted to wanted to do something a little different. Okay. Um, so that's when I just thought gray is pretty neutral. So that was why it's because gray is neutral. Awesome, thank you. That's a good question, yeah, that's a good question. So just so you guys know, we will be moving on into our leaves now. Um, that's like, it's my favorite part. It's like, it's why I did this. I wanted to do leaves. So we're gonna do the leaves up here next. Um, and let me just go ahead and while you guys are finishing up the tree, I will lay out my colors for you so you can see them. Um, I'm gonna start off with my lightest colors. So um, of course, I don't know how many colors you have in general, but it would be nice to um, line them all up. And of course, I don't, I'm just gonna use this ruler to block these guys from, from rolling off the table. So my marker set actually gives me a lot of choices. Um, I have this lemon yellow. I have this tangerine orange right here. I have this regular pumpkin orange, which I can see on camera, it looks very similar. So I might pick one. Um, I have, actually I did not use red in this one. I used red in the other one. Instead of red, I used um, burgundy. You see the difference here? That's red. That's burgundy. You can see the, the difference between the two. I just wanted to point it out. Whatever you want to use or whatever you have is up to you. This is red. Here's my burgundy. I am placing them in order of light to dark, light to dark. 
Um, let's see, what else did I put? I even put in some tree trunk color in there. There's that same color as my tree trunk because it's a brown, leaves turn brown. Um, let's see, I even have just a little bit of uh, green, a little bit of green. And of course I put my lovely little fuchsia in here. I personally love fuchsia. Now you don't have to put fuchsia though. If you don't like that, you definitely don't have to use it. Again, I this one over here takes the slightly more traditional route slightly. Um, this one right here, this one was using just your regular average um, aspect. So I have the yellow, I have the orange, red, and purple. Same technique though. Now, um, let's see, I think in this one, I didn't have red, so I'm just gonna set that aside. Um, in this one, I used tangerine actually. So I'm gonna take this lemon yellow out, but you can absolutely use lemon yellow. I'm going by this one though. This one is tangerine. So my tangerine is my lightest color here. So I'm gonna start with that. So Hannah, can you just do mm -hmm. like all of the colors? <laughs> or I mean, yeah. is it at some point too many? No, honestly, it's not too many because um, if you look at regular autumn trees, yeah. eventually they, they're gonna, those colors, all of those colors eventually. So they all have a cycle. So yeah, you know. <laughs> um, now it's best to use the lightest colors first, no matter what that is, um, because it's easier to put the dark colors on top. The dark colors are going to lay on top of them. The dark colors are going to lay on top of them. Um, so it's a lot easier just to have lots of your light color and fill in the spaces with the darker colors. So here's what I mean. Um, if you think about leaves, they are always going to grow upwards. They grow towards the sky. All plant -like life does this. They grow towards their, their, the sun. So at least for now, I'm gonna start and they're all gonna point upwards. And I'm gonna have some branches in the way. So I'm definitely going to um, crisscross and overlap some of these branches. I'm not gonna avoid it. I'm gonna embrace it. They're leaves, they get everywhere. And if you'll notice, these little scribbles are just that, they're little scribbles. I don't have to go out of my way to, um, to make them big or grand. Um, we have a power in numbers here. And I know I use that phrase a lot. Um, lots of leaves, lots of little patches. And honestly, you, you could fill up this entire space um, solely with your light color and you would be absolutely fine. We want a lot. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And we'll start at the top here. Um, you'll notice that down here, as I get closer to the bottom, my uh, my little my leaves they start to point more outward or downward. So you can do that now. You can do that later. It doesn't really matter. Just keep it in mind. They go. They radiate outward, generally. And I'll do a lot of talking as we're doing this. Like you guys, just kind of start filling it in. There's really not too much else other than that. Make these little, these little uh, patches of scribbles. Any questions? No questions, all right. Is that more of a gold or a yellow? Which one, I'm sorry? Is that a gold or a yellow? Oh, this is this is more of a goldish color, um, and I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera. I, I call it tangerine, but it's kind of like a goldish color. Hannah, was this the same marker set we sent out? Yeah, it was. It was okay. The 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 very very first um, June project we did, it was the same set. Yeah, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna make things too hard for you guys. 
So, so I don't have again, a question, Hannah, but I was in a meeting today with uh, somebody in Illinois and she was telling me that she was looking out the window and the sun was shining and the tree was turning and it was so pretty. She even sent me a picture of the tree and I got mm -hmm. off the phone with her and um, maybe 10 minutes later, your reminder to come to class with the picture of wow. the beautiful fall tree. So wow. very, very good timing. I know, what a huge coincidence. That's I know. awesome. Maybe that's a sign. Maybe we should like attempt to create trees with rays of light coming through. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is kind of difficult actually, but I'm sure there's a way. <laughs> so I, I have kind of a question because I wasn't looking when you were doing it, but I guess yeah. you're not putting the leaves. Well, you, I guess my question was you're not putting the leaves on the branches, but it, you sort of are. Yeah, I, I kind of am only because I don't want to avoid them. You know, I just want to I want to, for now, I'm making sure that I get an even spread everywhere. Um, and honestly, I think that avoiding them is just my natural instinct kicking in because there's something in the way. I'll avoid it, that kind of instinct. So um, I am going to go around and definitely overlap some. And you will find that as you overlap a bit, um, some of your, your marks on the tree might smudge just a teensy bit. And that's beautiful. I actually encourage that because I just feel like it's, it's just gorgeous and it's just an amazing um, artistic effect. So um, yeah, don't worry about that. Um, so Hannah, I'm using yeah. the watercolor pencils that oh. from, from the class this summer. And yeah. I was planning to make everything kind of um, meld together at the end anyway do you think that's a bad idea or do you think that'll look cool i think it'll look really cool i okay. recommend using um a small brush if you can because i know that i i sent out like a, a medium size brush like a size eight i think or six uh -huh. um, so i would recommend something small i'm looking okay for my, uh, okay um this is that size one. Let me show you. This is a size one, perhaps even like a size four, like a tiny little flat right here. Okay. The one will do well. Um, yeah, and you'll get like a very similar effect, but very painterly, very watercolor like. Yeah. So I think it's a cool idea. I like that you're doing that. Um, let's see. I so I'm coming up on the part of my painting where I have a lot here, um, but I also have plenty of room for, for more. I have room to grow, room for more colors. So I think for me, it's about time to start filling in those spaces. Um, now, personally, I'm looking back and I'm saying that could be filled in a bit more. I say, like, I tend to do this a lot. I tend to like, Say, like do one thing and end up going a little overboard because I'm like, hold on, I need to do a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It just kind of happens. So anyway, just keep in mind, it's a lot better to have more of your light color because it's easier to layer the dark colors on top. The dark colors, they don't need help standing out. They're going to stand out anyway. So um, have a lot of the lighter colors in there. If you think it's too much, it's probably perfect which is why I keep going and adding more. So next step is take your next color of choice. Um, remember, remember how we put them all in order of light to dark? Take the next color in that line. For me, that's regular orange. And start filling in the spaces. Now that's what I'm going to aim for. I'm going to aim for filling in the spaces. But keep in mind, everything is going to overlap. We want to overlap it all. Because leaves, they, that's what they do. They, you take a look at them and you can never, it's, it's hard to focus on this one leaf, right? So make a lot of them. Okay. 
And with that, I want to go back to the question that we asked in the beginning. Has anyone done anything creative this week or in the or maybe in this last month too? It doesn't have to be this week. I know we heard from a few people. Now that can be cooking, that can be rearranging, that can be what else? Oh, playing music. Um, yeah, yeah, if anybody plays instruments, that's that can be creative too sometimes. I wouldn't really know. I um I am not I stared at the guitar in my in the corner of my uh room, but I didn't actually pick it up. Do you play? Now that I need to learn. Oh, see, that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's where I'm at. I... That was last winter, so it didn't happen last <laughs> winter. So maybe this winter. I yeah, I'm gonna have to encourage you. I'm gonna have to like send you reminders. <laughs> I have a guitar that my dad gave me um, a few years ago because um, he, he's just incapable of playing anymore. Um, so he gave me his amp and he gave me uh, his guitar, which, which he, he made that guitar actually. He just made it from scratch. Wow. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just it's been sitting there. I need to pick it up and I need to learn it. Well, wow, he made it from scratch. Yeah, he, he made it from scratch. Um, he's trying to do that more now, um, but he, he spent a long time learning the ins and outs of guitars because of course he's been playing for years since he was a teenager. Wow. Um, so he's made, he actually made one out of metal once before. He had a friend cut some pieces of metal out in, in the shape that he wanted. And then, um, uh, I think his friend welded it together because I don't think he knows how to weld. I don't remember. But he, yeah, anyway, he made the guitar and assembled it after the metal parts were assembled. Um, cool. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I have a tip for you, guitar wannabes. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was a failure with the guitar. Uh -huh. I just, it never happened. You know, I like yeah. the piano. I got the accordion. I was never really good at any of it. And then I fell in love with the ukulele. Uh -huh. And it's so much easier. It's smaller. You can hug it. You got four <laughs> strings, you got four fingers. <laughs> and um, I could apply like all the music theory I learned. Not that most people don't want to know that, but I could apply all the things to the ukulele so it's hard I hardly play anymore but I could say because my um, because my hands kind of paralyzed but I can say very proudly I'm a ukulele advocate so if anybody wants any tips about ukulele and is that and I, I will yeah. I don't know if anybody else plays here but I'll tell you there is like a whole ukulele culture that is the bane of my existence because they're terrible <sighs> <laughs> it's kind of like well anybody can do art or anybody can do it and then you know I would go to music jams with really good musicians and they're like oh god you go oh my god you go oh. and finally I earned respect because I can do things with the ukulele that I could never ever ever do with the guitar to me the guitar was like like a boat you know trying mm, to move yeah. a big barge anyway so that's so I say if you really want to make some music, it's so much easier with ukulele. Karen, you should have yeah. a um a class with us. I could do that. I and we can get could. those um you know don't you get no I guess it's for violin you get the shoe strings with the or the shoe box with the um rubber bands and we can. Oh, that's not necessary. I mean, they're oh, so uh, cheap. It's sad. I mean, they're so, <laughs> they're so um. <laughs> I have one I found on the street. They breed too. They're kind of dangerous. They breed. You can let breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> most instruments, you know, you're like, so um, how many, how many um, ukuleles do you need? You can say that about guitars too. How many do you need? One more. <laughs> Just you can one say more. that about guitars too. That's absolutely my dad right there. How many, how many art supplies do you need, Hannah? I, I know. I ask myself that question every time I go to Michael's <laughs> or something. How many of these color pencils do you need? How many markers do you need? Now, I just want to add um, in my picture, um, it's okay um, to start 
now or really honestly any one of these middle colors or ending colors here to start adding some colors that kind of go against the grain so to speak so they kind of um here i'll put one down here they don't really go with the same pattern or the same direction as as whatever else you have in here you might be able to see it better with one of my other colors actually i could use he's my my burgundy so perhaps uh this one just kind of goes upward and this one goes the opposite direction like like that so i'm still i'm still um aiming for the same areas like like these white areas just to fill it in so i can go against the grain every once in a while and now this helps to give it a little bit of variation you can certainly um Oh, this one's like a burgundy color. So here's the cap color. Now, if you happen to have the same set as I do, I have like a, the, the 20 piece set. Um, beware, one of them is that fuchsia and the other one is burgundy. I'm gonna show you the cards. Mm -hmm. Look at the cards here. I've been using note cards more lately to uh, write down a little practice yeah. hannah you're cutting out a little bit oh is this better yeah that's better okay good here we go found my note card so i've been using these as little scrap pieces so that one's the fuchsia so i'm going to put this on the side there and this one's the burgundy it's a bit more uh, more like autumn, so exactly why I chose it. So I hope you guys can see the pattern now. Um, at this point, um, once you have a more even spread of your light colors, um, if you wanted to, um, just completely up to you, you can sort of decide whether or not you want more of a certain color on one side, maybe in, in patches, like larger patches, I would say. Um, it's just an, an artistic choice. You can absolutely spread them out evenly everywhere if you want to. Or um, in my case right here, I decided that I really wanted to have the this, this fuchsia color. I really wanted fuchsia to be a little more on the right side of my picture. Although you can see it on the left side, but it's more concentrated over here. That way down here, I could have a more concentrated version of fuchsia on this side. It's just a little artistic choice. You can kind of decide that now if you wanted to do that. So let's see, where was I? I'm not gonna add fuchsia, fuchsia yet. And honestly, if you guys don't want to add fuchsia, if you feel like it's a little, it's a little too bright, you can absolutely just leave it out. I think right now I'm still in the, uh, in the stage where I'm trying to evenly spread my colors. So I'm evenly spreading my, uh, my burgundy here. This is the kind of project that um, because it's so repetitive and you do so many of the same types of marks, um, if you happen to be you know, doodling or maybe making a picture again, I don't know, uh, put some music on, you know, just let your mind wander. Um, yeah, that's honestly, that's most kind of, of weird life. when you do that you think about start thinking about something and you didn't know you were thinking about it until you just said something yana well you know i feel like that happens with meditation though like you just kind of let your your thoughts wander and yeah you just you don't know that that was on your mind until <laughs> until it actually until everything else quiets out and uh, you can hear your thoughts a little more clearly I don't know, is that is that kind of the same thing we're talking about? 
I think that you're, I, I think that, um, you're very an intelligent person and you, 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 you definitely could feel people really well. Thank you. Anna, I have a problem. Yeah. Uh, I made my leaves too tiny. And so, I mean, it's kind of interesting, but they don't look like leaves anymore. So I just look started going over some of the spots just to make them bigger. Mm -hmm. Like, what should I do? Do you mind show, like, like showing you? Up so I you will see? spotlight yeah. Karen. Yeah. I always Thank have you. this problem. I'm always like so unhappy with what I'm doing in the middle. And then I find solutions. Yeah, then you find solutions. Okay, so you felt like maybe it's a little bit too, maybe your patches are a little small. Yeah, and so I started right? making the, the greens bigger, but everything else is, they're really small. No wonder it's taken me so long. <laughs> And I can make my pencil bigger. You you can make your pencil bigger. Um, yeah. And honestly, I feel like um, most of my, well, no, take that back. I guess mine, my marks are just a little bit bigger than yours, but not by much, honestly. And I think right now would be a good time to add some variation. So um, perhaps you can think of it as adding on uh larger pieces lar larger leaves because With in my head colors. i'm thinking yeah same colors and in fact you could even go against the grain like like what i was doing here with the burgundy and because it's a different size um it'll make a bigger impact also if you go in different directions much like i started doing with the burgundy and don't be afraid to to overlap uh, some of your 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 tree trunk as well, especially here at the top, where there are so many leaves. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. Well, I just yeah, probably. <laughs> I take it all in. The end, it always comes out good, but. I was like, oh no, yeah. my leaves are too small. How could they be like it's too small? They wouldn't fall off. They wouldn't be that tiny. <laughs> no, I think you you do have a really good handle of um absorbing the information verbally and then figuring out how to apply it to your picture um, it, afterwards. It's to be honest, I almost never look at what you're doing because if I look, <laughs> I'll just get overwhelmed going, I can't do that. So that's <laughs> But it's just like all like floating around like leaves in my head. <laughs> it's floating around like leaves. I like that. I see a question from Colleen. Um, do I need another? Do you need another branch on the right, Colleen? I'm gonna look for your screen. Okay, I got you, Colleen. Oh, you are muted. You're muted, Colleen. I can't hear you. Okay, thanks, Hannah. Do you think yeah. I need another branch here? Uh, or, I feel like, you know what? I feel like yes and no. I feel yeah. like um, you could very easily put another branch that just kind of looks like it's coming from the backside. So in fact, why don't I just do that to mine right now? Is that what you can see? Or uh, when I looked at that, I saw that's the perfect like swing branch. Those are like the oh. types of trees that you're like, that's the perfect oh. branch. So that's, that's another one. thing you could do. Yeah. Uh-huh. You absolutely could. Um, so you could do that. Um, or honestly, you don't even have to do another branch. Why don't you, I think this would be better. Why don't you extend your branch, your leaves, I'm sorry, extend your leaves to go further down. Just have them reach from the top where they end here and have okay. them reach down to the same oh, level see. as your middle section here. Okay, same so level. I'm doing more leaves here. Exactly. You should gotcha. do that. Thank you. You're welcome. So go ahead for everyone, go ahead and add, um, your final two or maybe even three colors whatever you've got i've got my green here and 
because it's fall, I actually don't want to put too I, much green. I just know that, you know, I just thought it would be really nice to have some green in there. So at this point, there are there's so few um, white spaces left that I'm just kind of putting them in there, spreading them out. And they're just going to cover everything. Now, I do personally really love the fuchsia. So I'm going to go ahead and add the fuchsia. Again, I want you guys to add whatever you feel like or whatever you don't add, whatever. Don't add it if you don't like it. So I'm adding the fuchsia. I'm still going to aim for most of my lighter spots, my white spots here. But for the most part, it's just going to be everywhere. And then after this, we're going to jump to the bottom and we're going to start to address um, this bottom here, all those leaves back there. Now this part, that part will probably go um, pretty fast simply because I feel like you guys have a really great handle on, uh, on doing these types of, of marks. They're going to be similar, but smaller. They're going to be smaller. Let's give you guys another moment. Now I'm taking a look at this entire picture right here. And I feel like, I feel like she needs a little bit more leaves over on the side. I'm just pointing out what I see on my picture. It looks a little squarish. So I just want to kind of round it out a little bit. There we go. Much better. Now for the next part, you can start this at any point, um, anytime you're ready to jump down here. Um, we want to create what I like to call a horizon line. So we're looking out into the horizon. We see this line right out here. And because I have um, some greenery down here, this is the fall. So, you know, for me, the grass is still gonna be a little bit green. So I'm gonna take my green, um, but if you don't have green, you can use brown too. Just keep that in mind, brown or green, either will work just fine. But I created dashes along the line here, along the, the horizon line back here. I always like to point, to exactly where I want my, my, my line to be. So from here all the way across, that just visually gives me an idea of where to go. So I'm gonna start on this side and then I'm gonna jump over the tree and jump to that side. So I'm making dashes and these dashes are absolutely not gonna not, they don't have to be even at all. That's just a little start, just a little start to our, our horizon there. They're just dashes that go all the way across. Still have plenty of space for this swirly. We'll put that later. And then I'm basically gonna transfer all of these colors down here. Um, think of it as like a mirror reflection, except it's not going to be as big. I am going to start off once again with my lightest color. And I'm just going to make a bunch of tiny little marks that extend um, horizontally. See that? Very, very, um, very, very rough. They're all horizontal because they're all leaves that just kind of that just have fallen. I'm noticing that my hand is wanting to make a pattern like it always does. So in a minute, I'm just gonna I'll go in there and I'll mess up that pattern like that. And I'm even taking these colors right up to the tree. And since my tree kind of extends out here. I can see it extends out here. I'm going to extend up here as well. Once again, it's absolutely okay to have 
more of your light color than you think. And then once I'm finished with the light color, once again, just with, with the same pattern as before, I'm gonna move on to my next color in line. So for me, that went from tangerine to orange. Just kind of fill in the spaces like we did before. I think I'm going to leave a little more space for my fuchsia. So I feel like I want my fuchsia didn't quite show up the way I would have liked. So down here, I'm just going to leave more space for my fuchsia. For me, let's see, honestly, I could probably just add that fuchsia in there right now. And you guys are totally okay to go out of order too, especially now that. Um, you've gotten more of a feel for the markers and more of a feel for for how the colors layer on top of each other. If you want to go out of order, that's totally fine. I'm giving myself some more space for that fuchsia because I love that fuchsia. Once again, I'm just kind of breezing through. Um, out here, as I go further away from my trunk out here, um, I can leave a little more space in between my leaves, like out here, more space in between. See that? It's not as clustered. I don't know, somehow it just feels a little more natural to do it that way. At least to me, you don't have to though. I just kind of want to stretch out here and I'll probably put more like orange out here too. Like, uh, yeah, I'll need orange. Why not? I'll probably put a little bit of green in there too. Forgot I had burgundy, I'm gonna do burgundy. And then just so you know, after this, um, we're gonna go ahead and put some more scribbles, some scribbles of green. That same green, if you're using that green that you put back here, if you happen to not be using green, perhaps you decided to put brown back here, um, then we can do a little bit of that as well. <laughs> so let's see, I think, I'm, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with my little pile of leaves down there. Now, let me take that sampling. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start out, well, maybe start up here. I'll put a few longer swipes, a few more longer tick marks out here. Now, these marks out here, they just kind of stretch, stretch down here. You can see a lot of my marks break up down here. Um, I like to think of these kinds of marks as a signature. Um, a lot of us have signatures that are very flowy. And if you, I'm just taking the scrap piece of paper so you can see, but kind of flowy like a signature. Now that almost looks like my actual signature. Pretty close. <laughs> Pretty messy. So, but you kind of get the idea. Um, I'm going to start here. Signature, signature, signature. What's the signature? Stretch down here. I'm going to pick up my pen and do another signature over here. Add a little extra signature on top. 
it does help to kind of um, look up a little bit from it and look at it from afar and perhaps even stretch your arm out. I know you guys can't really see it very well, but you know, just kind of stretch your arm out and very loosely put those marks in there. It does help. It's gray. Is it green or gray? It's green. It is green. Now in a moment, um, we'll go ahead and put in our, our swirly in the sky. We're gonna put our wind in there. Now these marks, um, they're a little different. They're more curvy on one side. They're more elongated. So you're more than welcome to grab a scrap piece of paper and just kind of try it out. So I know we've, we've, doing a, uh, we've been doing a lot of um, shorter, um, shorter patches, I would say. But these marks are a bit more, are a bit more elongated, curvy. So this one, I'm just kind of practicing these longer, longer types of brush strokes. Give y'all a few seconds. Can't wait to see the end result. And Hannah, what we can do is after we put the, the squirrel in, we can check if anybody is ready to go to bed or whatever and give them an opportunity to share their art. And then mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure you have time that we can stay on for add-ons if there's something we want to add on to our picture. Yeah, we can do that. Sure. So you can let me know either in the chat or you can just, we'll, we'll take a time out uh, if you would like to leave a little bit early and we'll make sure, and you want to show your art, we'll make sure to give you some time to show your art because that's important. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is important. Okay. So for the swirly in the sky, I started with the swirl here. And for you, depending on your tree and where your the trunk is located, perhaps where your, your leaves are located, um, you may or may not have enough room for a swirly on one side, but maybe you'll have room for it on the other side. Maybe it should go the opposite direction for you. It just kind of depends on you. But I am going to start, no matter what, start with the swirly itself, because I feel like that's the easiest way to start our shape out. So my tree trunk um, does kind of cut into the swirly right back here. So I'm gonna make my swirl and then jump over it and then just uh, uh, flip to the other side. So it, it does really help to do this with your finger just to kind of get that motion down. My swirly is gonna start there, jump over the tree and fly away that way. And I'm literally just repeating the same thing again and again and again until I thicken up this, this little piece. So repeat, 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 repeat some more and some more. It's getting a little bit bigger and some more. And then now I'm ready to jump over to the other side and flipping out that way. I'm thickening it up every single time. It's nice to have a few little flare pieces that kind of stretch out some pieces that are a little bit smaller. And swirl and swirl and keep on going. In fact, if you wanted to, you can use the thicker end um, and sort of make one or two lines a little thicker, like that. That's kind of nice, I like that. I can't wait to see them all. I think now, um, now's probably the time. If you have to go to bed, you can, um, we can go ahead and spotlight you if you'd like to show your work off. Um, because that was the last of the, the, the regular project without the, the extra add-ons. So if you, need, if you need to go to bed, you don't really have time to add a little, a little extra 
We're looking um, at all of hand. you. So just yeah, we're looking at you. Raise it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Colleen, we're gonna spotlight Yay. you. There you Woo! go. And look at the swirl. We're oh. getting there. Oh we're my getting gosh, getting I better, love Hannah. it. Thank you, Hannah. I'm getting better. It's slowly, but it's surely. <laughs> it's lovely. It's so lovely. And honestly, I know you're working on like the the branches. I'm sorry, not the branches. The um the leaves as well. You're working your way down. Yes. Um, you're on the right track. Just keep on adding it. It's perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. And the color scheme is beautiful. Uh huh. It's a beautiful color pink. scheme. Thank you so much, guys. I love this. Thank you, Hannah, so much, and Alexa. Of course. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good night, Colleen. You uh, as well. Uh, Claudia, you're next. Take it. Oh, my God. There we wow. go. Oh, I love it so much. Look oh, at thank you. Seriously, I love it. Like, just your texture in your trees, but your trees, just everything just fits together so well. Oh, it screams it. fall. It just, you could hop uh -huh. into it and be taken into a fall Hallmark movie to me. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I Thank love you. that you added some browns as well in the leaves. It just, it comes together so well. Oh, well, thank you so much. It was lots of fun. I really enjoyed Good. it. Oh, wonderful. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Denise, yes, I, I saw you holding up. Okay. Yeah. Oh there we my go. gosh. Oh. oh my God. I like this oh. is a grand tree. This tree is, is hundreds of years Beautiful. old. Oh, like I love how thick and how gorgeous those uh those branches are. And I feel wow. like the swirl in the background just is a beautiful compliment. Mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh -huh. it's a lot of Great fun. job, Denise. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Denise. Oh, man, All that was right. beautiful. <laughs> and then Tony. Oh, oh my God. God. Tony. And that's with watercolor, right? Yes. I know. Look at that. That gradient down there is just <laughs> wow. beautiful. Like those oh, I love too. it. Like, a, like, a, like the tree is talking, you know, those. What yes. You call them, right? Oh, honestly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, like one of those. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Honestly, like, again, this looks like a wise hundreds of years old tree. This mm -hmm. this tree has seen civilizations rise yes. and fall. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Fantastic job, Tony. Thank and you. then you win. Nice, nice to be here. Wendy, oh, oh, yes. oh my goodness, that Wendy. tree texture. I know, I'm looking at that. We, like, saw I'm a tree, we saw a tree with these colors and it just resonates to oh. my mind. You know, it's, in New York, you know, the trees get really gorgeous colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the honestly, fall. I'm I'm loving the way you handled the bark too. Like not just the color, but the bark is just so gorgeous to look at too. The bark is so lifelike. Mm -hmm. It is. It really is. It's like some sort of um, there's a name for the kind of like wavy texture that that you get on wood. Um, and I forget what it what it is, but that's that wood grain me of that grain. Texture. Yeah, there's a name for that kind of pattern. It's very, it looks very wavy and textured and shiny. And that's, it looks shiny to me from my perspective. Um, just I'm the, the only one that loves to do trees. I, trees, I just love to do, I, I love trees. They're, they're so the fun. They're, yeah. yeah, you do. No, Tony? trees yeah. is actually one of the things we keep getting requests for. So that's mm -hmm. why Hannah honored it. No, <laughs> people love trees. That's why I did it. <laughs> that's why I did it. And I'll probably do it again, you know, different, different styles, something else different, but we love trees. Mm -hmm. Another amazing artwork, Wendy. We're so proud of you I, and I how did, far you've come. I don't know what I would do without this art class. I love it so much. Oh, yeah. we love you, Wendy. So Thank it's just, you. It's just, uh, it's so, you know, I, I, it's just, I, I love hearing from all of you. I've got to know all of you from talking and it's just. 
like we become a family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. I love chatting with you guys. And I love Hannah, seeing what this people is, do, the yeah. differences of what people do, and mm -hmm. same this, instruction. Like I this is one lot. of the same best parts of AnCan because all of our groups are here and their family members and everybody. And mm -hmm. I just I love that so much that we're all our subset of the AnCan family, the art friends. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And did I miss anyone, Randy? I see, but I miss anyone who wants to go to bed. Marianne. Okay, Marianne. You, Marianne. Mm -hmm. And then Anna Marie. There we go. Too. Lovely. Yeah, there you go. Thank oh, you so much. Yeah, have have a good night. Thank you. You too. Good night. Oh, good that's night. so beautiful, Marianne. I know, Marianne. Look at that. I know. I love that you have so many, um, so many knots in your wood. Yeah. And I love the leaves too. Mm -hmm, the leaves. Is your is your audio not coming through? You're on mute or just? I don't think she's on mute. Mm. Well, mm. that's why it's good that a pitcher speaks a thousand words. It's the right. pitcher speaks yeah. for Marianne. <laughs> It does. It really and it does. Says and it's color phenomenal. Pencil. And honestly, Marianne, I love the way you were able to like make the texture around your your knots, like your your uh, what's it? The owl holes. Yes. Um, I just love the way you handle that. It blends very seamlessly. Bye, Brian. Thank you, Marianne. And then oh, bye, Tony. Bye, Tony. And then Amory, here you go. You're up next. Good night, Tony. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness! All, all those what branches. Oh, too many branches. Ooh. Oh my gosh! There's no, so many. Great. I love them. Oh. Awesome. I, I know. The branches. There's so much life. There's just there, I can there imagine is. so many squirrels. So many squirrels. So many birds live there. So many bugs. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the picture is so lifelike and living. It's uh -huh. vibrant. Oh, wonderful job. Thanks. That did you try to put a uh, uh, mountains back there? Because I'm loving the way that looks. No, I was I was trying to do the swirl, but it didn't it, really come it, out like a swirl. It looks like it looks some amazing. sort of um uh, how do we describe it it looks like wind but it looks like the wind is sort of blending in with the the mountains in the background um and it's creating okay. some sort it of it like looks intentional it looks like you yeah, planned it, this it it does thank you. I mean it. it's beautiful <laughs> thank you all oh, this was a amazing. lot of fun thanks Good. oh we're so glad Good. thank you <laughs> and then brandy and matt there you are. There's Matt. There's Brandy. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, oh. Hi. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hello. There we oh. go. Oh, very good. I, I know. I'm just loving like the differences that I see. Like both of y'all's branches are just fabulous. Um, Bra or Matt, I'm really loving the way you uh, you handle the tree and like the shadow on the side of the tree. Um and the the red is just gorgeous. Yeah. Brandy, I'm loving, absolutely loving the uh, the leaves that come out and the way they radiate, but also the, the texture. I put them in the wind. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> I That's know, awesome. Touch. I just noticed what's behind us. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm very cool. Perfect. It's like you planned that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Hannah, you know, it's also cool. They look so realistic, but like two different mm -hmm. forms of trees. Mm -hmm. yeah, they both exactly. look like real trees, but just yeah. two different uh -huh. types. That's amazing. I know. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Great job. You guys did amazing. 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 And Thank is there you. like any bye, Hannah? Bye. bye. Good bye. night, guys. Good night. Uh, is there anyone else wants to share their art? Uh, if you are not ready, if you want to continue making on, Hannah's here. Yep. So just yeah, so. let let us know. <laughs>
Well, yeah. I have, I, I, I'm not happy with it, but I'm never happy when we're at this point ever. And then I just kind of keep working on it so I can show you what I'm unhappy about. <laughs> yeah, show me. I want to see it. Let's go for it. My tree's too fat. My leaves are too small. Does this make my butt look big? I love it. so good. It's amazing. I know, Karen. Like, I'm really loving all the texture that you put. And I know that, like, it sounds like you can't really see it right now, but I uh, feel like the texture is really what makes it. It makes it look like I'm looking at it through some sort of prism. It's an art artistic, uh, artsy prism. And the texture, and all the, which texture are you referring to? All of it. Like, it uh, all just looks, uh, it's, it's honestly, it's the, the combined texture of the, uh, the tree trunk with the leaves all around it. There's something about the, the quality of line work that you have. Um, I love it. I honestly, I really love it. I Karen. wouldn't have thought it was from an app either. That looks yeah. like it was done with pencil yeah. or watercolor to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it's actually, I did it with crayon. The crayon thing, except for the purple down on the bottom. I did it with crayon yeah. and I do, I'm like, I'm not, it looks different to me, you know, than right what you're seeing. Uh -huh. I just feel like that bark is like too much. So like, how can no. I take it down? Really? Uh, no, I, love I think, it. yeah, like I, I have to wonder, um, if, is it, is it the sides of the bark that you're referring to? Yeah. Like, um, like this side perhaps? I think maybe because I see what you're talking about. I actually that's one of my favorite parts right there. Um, yeah, but I think part? I can see what you're talking about. The you have a part right here on on the side on to me oh, that, my right that's side. That's fat. That's fat. I I love that part though. I just there's something about that texture that really draws my eye, um, and it matches with um, some of your other darker parts um, in your tree. So I personally love that, but. Um, if you wanted to add anything extra, I would only say maybe add like some lines to even out the sides, um, like longer okay. lines. I yeah, I know what you're saying. But, and then but I like it. I what about like that it. that big the hole that the, owl. Oh yeah, the the hollow what, right there. Yeah, what can I do? Um, that? I would say, are you able to add a darker color on top of it? Maybe just. Um, let me do it to mine. Um, maybe just sort of on the bottom, make a little line to give it some weight on the bottom. Make a okay. line to make it weight, give it weight. Just need like a darker brown, maybe. That's it. Okay. What I did with the branches, oh, it's funny because it's really on the right side, but when I look, it's on the left side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Branch. Yeah. But what <laughs> yeah. I did was it was like almost too dark and too big. It was first of everything was too skinny and that was too big. And so then I just put the eraser tip on. I that's how I got the texture, like just adding eraser. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, that's one way to do it. That is that is actually a technique in charcoal drawing, you know. So that's one way to do it. Very, very cool. No, it's Thank you, Sarah. So, so amazing how I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but you, you always come through. You really always come through. All right, if you guys are ready, I'd love to show you how to do a little swing. Oh, Andrea, there. are you ready to show your art? Yeah, but I feel like yeah. I need a, di a different color, but yeah. Okay, but so we'll, we'll bring you up. It. And I go haven't gotten the- um, hard, hard to see in the light. The host, oh. It's a little blurry, I wonder. Uh, um, I've got as much light in here, I think, as I can get. Okay, okay. I, I'm is there any this problem? But is there any way you can just uh, put your your picture a little bit closer to the camera? Yeah. Let me see if I can get this light on. Okay. There we go. I can see a little bit. I think it's sideways. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. No, I see. Yeah. 
I can see some of the branch. Well, actually, there's a lot of branches. I love that you have a lot. It looks like um, a lot, like a, a large home for a lot of animals. Like I love that, that I can see. It. Uh huh. Like I love that I can actually see pretty close to it. Um, just the way you put the uh, the texture along with the texture of the trees, I, I meant, um, mm -hmm. along alongside uh, the way you put the branches. Um, I think there's something a way about the way that you do it in there. Um, but I like it. I really like that you have. I think you have some purple in there. I, think that's what I, I do. do. I do. And I'm yeah. hoping it'll sort of meld together a bit when I get the water on there too. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I like it a lot, though. But, yeah, I'll send you, get, take a picture with my phone and send you a better yeah. picture when it's done, done. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I forgot it was in watercolor pencil because when the <laughs> water hits, it's, oh, it's going to be so <laughs> It's going to spread. Uh -huh. I know, I'm kind of excited about that. I'm kind of scared for the twirl, the, the swirl, though. <laughs> you can't it's okay just uh get a little a little scrap piece of paper and practice a little bit oh there's a good idea so did That's anyone so, yeah. else need instruction on did they want to add something additional and they need hannah's help ask away what color did you do use for that swirl you used like a bluish gray didn't you it's like a, a lavender color. I just have, I had a lavender color in my set. So that is, that's what I used. Um, blue would be perfect for that as well. Um, gray would be really good too. It's, it fits in with the theme. Um, if you had a peach color, that would give like a, a more of a warm tone. Um, gold, same thing. All right. Well, if you guys are ready for a swing set, I'd love to show you real quick how to do a swing set. Sure. All okay. right. I'm going to pin the art cam again. Perfect. Thank you, Alexa. Um, let's go ahead and we'll, I'm trying to figure out what color to do the swing set because I want to choose a dark color that's going to overlap everything. Um, so it'll show up. So you could use gray, you could use um, a regular chocolate brown. Um, what else? Honestly, even this brown would be okay too. So I'm gonna choose to do use this one, this chocolatey brown. Now, this is perfect. I happen to have a tree that, um, that has an extended arm. So it just works out very nicely. If you think of a swing, um, you can think of a, a, a plank, I guess, like a, a plank of wood. And it kind of stretches across. Like you can see, I have a line that is horizontal and I have this, the two sides. And then they also, it's kind of, what is that shape? It's kind of like a rhombus shape. I'm gonna fill it in. I'm looking at it from a perspective here. And these swings, um, how many, I'm trying to think, how many ties do they have? It's, I think they have two pieces of, um, what is it? Two pieces of rope, rope. that come across here. Yeah, that's my endless brain acting up. Or would they, would they triangle up like two, one rope so. on either side that triangles up from the seat, right? I think so. Yeah. So on each corner. You're going to have a piece of rope that triangles up. So I'm going to start with the easy one. I can see it very easily right on this one back here. Yep. I'm going to make a dot here. And then I'm going to connect the two corners like that. Very cool. Now I'm going to move to the other one. Making a dot, connecting the two corners like that. And then the rope it stretches upward here. So I'm just gonna kind of trace it with my finger. This one, because it's closest to us, it's gonna reach um, uh, above, I'm sorry, on top of the, uh, the branch. I'm going to reach up. The other one, it swings around the tree. 
So it's going to go down. And actually, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to aim for right there. Always use your finger if you can't tell where exactly to go. Aim there. And that's my swing. I love now, that. Now, Absolutely okay if your um, if your 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 rope isn't exactly straight because that's just the wind. I just I imagine I can imagine the wind moving the strings a little bit or you uh, moving the rope a little bit. I guess I'll show one more thing if you want a little silhouette of an owl. Um, here's how you do that. Did we want an owl? An owl, right? So let's see. Pick a spot, any spot. Perhaps this owl is a mama owl um, guarding, uh, guarding her eggs in the hollow down there. So I'm gonna start with an oval shape. That oval shape is gonna be the body. Body, I'm gonna fill it in. And then that body needs a head. So I'm gonna draw a circle. And then I'm going to draw some little, um, I keep wanting to call them ears. They're not ears, ears. they're the feathers that kind of go outward like that. Now, I think that I will thicken up the little body, kind of like that, fixing it. Perhaps little tiny, tiny little claws that grip the, the branch, and that's my silhouette. I believe we wanted a squirrel, so I'll do a squirrel as well. And then that'll be it. Perhaps a little squirrel. Um, let's just do a little squirrely guy up here. Owl doesn't see this little squirrel. So, Maybe it would be better if I draw a squirrel on the scrap piece of paper because this is tiny. This is a really small, small spot. So a squirrel, it has a little head, tiny little head. And then it's got a tiny little neck that comes down, little squirrel body. Then tiny little ears that come up from the, from the head. And then perhaps little legs that kind of come out. And then of course, um, the, the tail. So the tail, I'm gonna go out and start with kind of like, it looks kind of like a rat tail, but I'm gonna thicken it up a little bit. It's going to, I'm gonna very, very slowly put the little hairs, make the little hairs follow this line. I'm even going to thicken this the little buoy area down here. There we go. Add some more fur. A little more fur than that. Perhaps some tiny little arms sticking out. If you can manage that. So let's, I'm going to backtrack and I'm going to try and do the same shape in my little tree here. So I have the squirrel, tiny little head. See if I can try to scale it down. Little neck, little body. Little, little tiny feet sticking out. And then a tail that kind of swirls out. That's gonna be the most distinct feature. It's gonna be the, the tail. Now it's a very, very much a silhouette right there. You are so awesome, Hannah. Thank Isn't you. she? Uh, yes. Anna, this is our third interaction in a week. I know. What a thinking. bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen and I actually, um, uh, we, we met up with another Anne Can um, a friend of ours from the support group, Elizabeth. Um, cause we were in Oakland and so we, we went, well, we were in San Francisco. And so we went to go meet Karen in Oakland and we had an amazing time. It was wow, just days ago so that I saw. Fun. You know what I it felt was, like? We pretended to be normal. 
<laughs> right? Like we sat out in a restaurant, like three girls, like we just pretended to be normal. Didn't talk a ton about our disease, but just enough so that, you know, nobody was like, you know, if you just do it with other people, they're like, I know what you're talking about, but we do. <laughs> well, we yep. do. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's absolutely right. Yeah, it was so fun. So I think we're going to end the recording here. That doesn't mean the party has to stop, but I want to give a big thank you once again to Hannah for making us do things we didn't think that we could. Uh, I want to give a big thank you to all of our art friends at ANCAN um, and just everyone for your support. We really appreciate you guys. And this is our favorite time of the month to spend time with you. So uh, if any questions, you can email Hannah at Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H at ancan.org. I can be reached Alexa, A-L-E-X-A at ancan.org. And please send us your art for the art gallery, even if you just participated online. So we bid you a good evening, good night, good day, whenever you watch this. And good Alexa, night, you're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. Yep.